Hi guys, welcome to the speech and uh, language technologies meetup. And this is the weekly paper reading session. Well, this this week we're gonna read two papers. The first paper is by Song Jun Chao and his colleagues or her colleagues. The paper's title is Improving Speech Recognition Accuracy of the Local POI Using Geographical Models. Please feel free to raise your question uh, or your concerns uh, so we can have a uh, discussion. And uh, FYI, this session is being sponsored by Olay Wave Inc. A speech solution provider. Okay, let's start. Um, during speech recognition, we met a uh, lots of uh, points of interest. For example, shopping center, uh, business names, etc. This is why the author from Tencent Cloud is trying to propose uh, the geo-based acoustic models and the geo-based uh, language models and that they have received a fairly significant amount of uh, uh, reduction in terms of uh, character error reduction uh, because this is uh, for Mandarin or Chinese uh, voice search tasks okay and let's see their uh, introduction part I think the introduction part is very clear to me and easy to understand I highly recommend everybody who come to this paper to have a close examination of their introduction part but today I, I won't go into the details um, and uh, I think that the term here they, they, they talk, talk about um, they wanted to use geo-based language model to improve the uh, the accuracy uh, on top under the scenario of having homophone POI names. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Chinese, let me use this example for you. Uh, take the word profit, for example. It can be either the profit of the company in the Q3 quarter, or it can be the profit who has led us through the difficult times. So Chinese also has this type of homo, homophone POI names. Um, and uh, so they, they talk uh, a lot about uh, the MBEST rescoring, which means uh, the speech recognition is done in two passes or two steps. Um, after the first step, you would uh, receive a NBEST results and then you just uh, re-rank the uh, NBEST result from the first pass in the second pass to uh, use another group of a geo-based language model uh, which is uh, combined with a uh, neural language model network. And the related works. Uh, well, when you have uh, uh, the scenario is uh, China is a large um, country. It has um, different people uh, from different provinces or uh, regions speaking different dialect dialects um, I would say I think that the authors uh, they really want to mean not mean the, the specific dialect because if the person is really talking in uh, a certain dialect for example Wu or Minanese the recognizer will fail what what they meant about the dialect I think based on my understanding of their paper they actually meant uh, the accented uh, Mandarin. Uh, for example, um, I think people from Beijing or Heilongjiang province, they speak more uh, orthodox Mandarin. 
啊。But for people who live in Guangdong or Shanghai, they also speak in Mandarin now. Um, um, but um, their their Mandarin is like uh, me spoke uh, speak English, have lots of accent. Um, uh, traditionally, I think people uh, of fairly amount of people are, are a common way of doing this is by. Uh, jointly training a universal AM, uh, which will be fine-tuned with a dialect specific data uh, to get uh, the accent, I would say accent specific uh, acoustic models. Uh, and also some people, they use multitask learning to do this. I think you can imagine, okay, you have shared the bottom layers and uh, the upper layers are adapted to different tasks. Um, and also, um, I think people you can, um, I think what here it meant is that um, the network is supposed to be generating not only uh, the speech content based uh, soft max output, but also you can also generate a secondary uh, soft max output, which is for direct classification, which means the network is capable of not only recognizing the spoken content, but also which dialect is being spoken. Uh, uh, I think I worked on this domain for several years. I would say none of these things are working as perfect as they, they, they theoretically is, okay. And uh, in this paper, uh, I think the author really uh, proposed something that's really new. Uh, I really got my um, really got um, enlightened by their work. I, I really like their work. Um, um, so this is uh, uh, their architecture. Um, let's look at their geo-based acoustic model. For those of you who are not familiar with the acoustic model. Um, it is not end-to-end -end model. So the acoustic model uh, takes um, FFT coefficients or filter bank or capture coefficients in or speech feature in and the output is the soft max of signals um, which is a little bit difficult to understand but you can regard that um, as the posterior the output of network is the posterior probability of the phones but indeed it's not phones it's some unit which has smaller granularity than the phone we call that states or tied states but you, you can you can understand it as uh, phones it won't affect the, the whole picture big picture so you can see after the acoustic model, you get a phone posteriors. Then you send that as an input to the subsequent decoder. The decoder right now, the popular way of doing this is um, using a transducer, or how to say that, or FST, or a weighted FST. Uh, then the phonetic sequence or the states of the phone's sequence would be transduced into a uh, sequence of characters in Chinese or words in English, etc. So this is how the the AM based recognizer or the a ASR that uses AM and then LM to perform speech recognition. So you can see this is different from the end-to-end -end based speech recognition, which does not distinguish the acoustic information and language information. Okay. And the the end to end model try to model everything in a in a in a one shot. Okay, their acoustic model architecture is shown very clearly in the figure number one. For those of you not who, not familiar with the OPGRU, you can regard it as as a uh, modified LSDM. Okay, so you can see the network is fairly uh, straightforward. If you don't look at the, the geo-based vector, uh, you can see that the PNCC is the capture coefficients passing through the spec. I think they have a typo here, uh, spec org. 
and then passing through the CDN, uh, and then send it to the TDN LSDM layers or blocks. Okay. And then what they are proposing is by using this geo vector, uh, which I think this geo vector is very nice uh, because uh, I think their service, uh, yeah, when they're deployed, that they are able to know where the user is located at by checking the geo data on the cell phone, I guess. Uh, and the, they encoded that as a geo vector and send through a fine transform and uh, uh, append it on top of the uh, output of the CN layers. Then we can think about this as a auxiliary feature or side side loop or side trunk, whatever. Um, and then what is this is a I think I don't think this is a fairly new but um, and also they also did this um, instead of using just the one output uh, softmax they have n outputs uh, and n is the number of the dialects talking about the language models okay um, I think China, correct me if I were wrong, I think there are about 33, 34, 34 provinces. This is why they come with the number 34, okay? 34 provinces. Um, and that this might be confusing to some of you, for some of you who, are, who are not familiar with the FSC or the composition of FSC. Um, okay, H is the HMM, okay? or uh, yeah HMM and uh, H composed with C is the acoustic model okay and uh, the L means lexicon so you can so what does the lexicon do so it will transduce the, the phone state sequence into uh, character state sequence in Chinese or word sequence in English and then what does the G and, sub, and the subsequent stuff do okay G does to or G will convert or transduce uh, the word sequence into another word sequence which means um, uh, it's actually the input is not word sequence it's like a word a, a word sequence candidates um, and the output will be another word sequence candidates um, but you can see in this process um, the word sequences the, the order got changed so this is the re-ranking stage so based on the frequency of the words uh, and this G is capable of uh, getting better accuracy by rescoring okay uh, I think they did a very uh, de dedicated um, operation of the uh, decoder, which they they adopt the on on the fly composition. Why? I think the main reason could be because the GB is very large. Uh, this is a five gram language model. Uh, I think this can easily go to hundreds of gigabytes. Um, then once you compose these with HCNL, um, the search graph, it's, it's actually a search graph, HCLG. It's a search graph got super big and it could be become terabytes. Although they may find some ways of serving this uh, super large uh, search graph, um, but you can imagine the searching would be slow right so this is why uh, they're using uh, this bigram this bigrams model at first and then the graph search graph uh, gets smaller but that do you mean but you mean that's the way uh, does that mean they would sacrifice um, the performance 
the answer is yes and no. Uh, it definitely, it's not better. It's not gonna be, gonna be better to have everything there, right? Have a full search. But uh, they once they, they, they got some hypothesis or uh, candidates to be searched. Okay, think about a star search. Okay, once you have come to one point, you want to go uh, the see if you can go to this arc, this arc, and that arc. Uh, what they're doing is that they compose they compose um, networks on the fly, which means that they will expand networks based on the recognition that has been done to this point, time point. So I think I'll give you ten seconds to see what's the benefit or what's the or what's the pros and cons of this. So the, the pros definitely is going to be uh, the model gets smarter, uh, the search gets faster. But cons is the on-the-fly composition of the network also takes time. Um, this will also slow down your search process. And also, on-the-fly composition is definitely not going to be better than the static graph. So they're gonna be suffer some something uh, from the searching on the full graph. Okay. And uh, the geo-based language model, um, I think this is standard. Uh, basically, what this means that uh, they already use the geo-based graph in the first pass decoding. You can see they have an interpolation here. I think they should use the word interpolation. So this is the basic language model's probability, and this is the geo language model probability. And uh, then in this, I think this is the yeah. I think this is the second pass. Then. They again, uh, they use the geo language model again, because this is sometimes something different. I think there this might be confusing. What well, this one? Every probability is calculated using n-gram language model, actually in the graph. Okay, and then this one. Think about this one. The probability how they are calculated. So this is the PB is the uh character level baseline level model i think this is the uh, my understanding is that this directly obtained from the first pass i don't think they, they're much different you can just uh, copy the score from the first pass okay and uh, the pr is the output of the neural language model it's a qr or something okay it's not engram anymore and uh, this pl2 Okay, it's not engram anymore like this one. It's also a neural language model's score. Okay, um, so I guess um, I'm not sure whether this is a neural language model or engram, but it's it's not important. The important thing is that so after the first pass decoding, um, the they managed to reduce the search base from a large, very large to a relatively small one. So, so they can on this smaller or reduce the space, search space on this reduce the size of search space. They're able to apply neural network model, which takes a lot of computing resources um, to further search what is the best candidate for the speech recognition. And uh, the neural network model won't be suffering from uh, facing too many candidates, which would uh, significantly slow down the recognition. Very smart design. OK, uh, their experiment, I would say their uh, model size is relatively large enough regarding the production model. Uh, they have 20k hours. Of 
data from different regions, and, and they have lots of POI names. This is uh, 1.2 uh, trillion POI names, lots of names. Uh, Although there are 34 provinces in China, but the authors did uh, cluster or split China into 10 different dialect regions. I I look at the I look at uh, the regions. I have to say I do not fully agree with their division um, because this means uh, the 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 the. The system has some expert knowledge in it. Um, what if the, the the split is not perfect? You know, um, I think the authors should come up with some better uh, solution or more data driven based. I, I prefer data driven based, but it seems that their their split works. Let's see their results. Okay. Uh, let's see the table three first. A zero is their baseline. So think about they just have one uh, acoustic model. They they just uh, mix the speech with accent uh, together uh, and just use that to train the the, the AM. This is A zero. Uh, what does the A one mean? A one means they add a uh, auxiliary feature, which is the dialect specific input into the network. Uh, but on the output side, they're still using just one soft max. Okay. And uh, what does the A2 do? A2 do it means on top of the A1, um, instead of having just a one single output layer, they're having N output layers. And the smart thing of this is that um, they serve the model with this tree styled uh, neural network. But during inference, because they know where the person is coming from, so they have the exact geo information, they are able to know that, okay, um, I'm going to infer from this specific branch of the output and they, okay so, so they say there are 10 outputs i'm just going to use the ace output because the eight out ace output correspond to where the user is coming from okay because their cell phone data or their cell phone input has this information um this is a a2 system and you can see this is a consistent improvement from a a0 to a1 and a2 um, I would say uh, this result looks very good to me. Very consistent. And they also did some uh, interesting comparison, which is um, the increased amount of data from certain dialects. So say there are, there are 10 regions. They're just getting a lot of data from certain region. Okay. And then they use try to add the data to different systems. And there they can see that actually for the A1 system, uh, which just have geo vector, but just have one single output, the result is getting worse. You can see our average is going from 5.1 to 5.2. Um, but with their proposed system, which is A2, you can see um, more data The system didn't get worse. Well, the, that means their A2 system is more robust than the previous baseline or the A1 system. Okay. And of course, um, their, their system works on the heavily accent accent, which is shown in table five. Uh, for the geo language model, I would say um, there's not much ex exciting um, things going on. Uh, except that the table six results looks really good i would say the results of this paper is really really good because you can see on the a2 system um 
with the baseline language model. Uh, I think this is without language model, I think. Yeah, um, or whatever language model it is. And they use the, the first pass decoding. It's already getting getting better uh, when, once you add the geo-based language model. Very significant impro uh, impro impro improvement. It's about 10%, you know. Uh, and then rescoring the investor from the first pass decoding result without a geo language model. I would say this doesn't change much from the L1, okay? And then finally, they integrated the, the neural network based geo language model uh, in the rescoring. What well, this result is amazing. You got further. I think it's like 15% from the L1. I think this is very significant. You know, big congrats to those authors. Very nice work. Okay. Uh, I uh, I think I'm gonna stop here. Let's see, anybody has questions? Who can tell me? Okay, nobody has questions, let me stop here.